everybody, this is Anne, and today is Tuesday, May 1st, 2018. Um, happy May Day. I hope everybody is doing great. This is a an update for my Floss Tube channel. So I'm going to be talking about some stitching things and some other crafty things. And um, yeah, let's kind of get started. Um, hang on one second because I have to have a little dog moment. I need to go lie down. Down. Um, we're very excited because I just got in from running a whole bunch of errands and I treated myself to um, spiced tea from Starbucks since I was up in town today. Don't do that very often, so that was kind of a nice little extra for my day to reward me for having done my doctor visit, my UPS run, the bank run, the post office run, grocery shopping, and home by 9.30. So, yay, go me. Um, let's see. First off, this is sort of a sidebar, but um, the latest, greatest thing. If you all have not gone and seen Guillermo del Toro's movie, The Shape of Water, leave work take the kids and drop them off at your mom's or daycare or babysitters, go get it on Netflix, go rent it on Amazon, wherever you can find it, go see it. Like this movie is possibly one of my favorite movies in the last decade. I like Guillermo de Toro's uh, inner vision of things. I think he's somebody with a very strong creative concept. And I think he does a great job actually presenting that in the film. But this film is amazing. The colors are gorgeous. The plot is engaging. Um, the acting is amazing. Um, I don't, I'm not going to give too much away about it, but it's, basically an adult fairy tale. This is not something that you would want to take your middle school and younger kids to, maybe not even junior high. Um, but the movie opens with this young woman who is a mute. She can hear, but she does not speak, so she signs, and she works as a custodian in a large government um, facility. And they bring in a tank that has a mer creature in it and this creature is amazing if you've seen any of del toro's other films um you'll recognize kind of the feel of it i watched an interview that said that he knew he wanted to do this movie he spent like a hundred thousand dollars of his own money up front before the production even started to create the suit that the actor wears for this. And it's pretty amazing. Um, the gills are actually mechanical and so they move and the actor is zipped into it. The only thing that's added afterwards, the CGI is they've um, done some stuff with the eyes. But other than that, it's the actor who's um, the very talented Doug Jones who most people wouldn't recognize on the street because he almost always does things in costume. If you've seen Del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth, um, he plays the fawn. Doug Jones plays the fawn. So he plays the mer creature in this. And there's all sorts of lovely, wonderful references to old movies and um, the main character, the heroine, lives over in old theater. Um, I... I absolutely loved it. It was not on my radar at all, and a friend recommended it, and I thought, okay, I'll watch that, and just see how it is, but blew me away, knocked my socks off. Um, kind of a different feel than Pan's Labyrinth, um, and it's it's in English. There's no subtitles, which Pan's Labyrinth, I think all the versions have the Spanish subtitles. So, anyway, I know a lot of you out there like similar things to what I like. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful film. I can see why it won awards. Um, I loved it. Hang on one second. More dog stuff. Lie down. She likes to come and help, but she's currently wandering aimlessly around the room, which drives me nuts. Um, 
Okay, so there, I got that done right up front. Um, otherwise, things are really good here. Life update, I am home and off the road for a bit for work travel, which is gonna be really nice. Um, I have some travel to do for fun, um, one short trip, and then no more work travel until August. Yay, so I'm home and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've got the windows open today. It's a gorgeous sunny day here. It's um, windy because I think we have a front coming through. They're saying maybe snow showers the next couple of nights, but I would doubt that. We <laughs> They keep promising and we have had no rain, no snow, no sleet, no any frozen or non-frozen wet precipitation. And we could really, really, really use it. It's super dry here. Um, we have a couple of big ponderosa trees out in our front yard and so I've I've already started watering them because I do not want to lose them. Um, yeah. So uh, that is about it. Um, I'm going to talk about some extra things at the end because one thing that I'm doing right now for a six-week period, it just kicked off last weekend, um, is an online camp that is winding up being really fun. I am enjoying that. They send out the main hostess person who has developed the content sends out new class um, lists things to work on over the week twice a week Sundays and Thursdays so we just got a new set of like fun course things to pick from and the thing I really like about this is that you don't have to do all of them but they're all available for you to pick up when you have time so um, for instance, one of the fun things that she had us do, and a lot of the projects are using a journal as a jump off point. Um, so one of the things that we were talking about this week is um, things associated with water, the ocean, islands, inland lakes, that kinds of things. And so one of the prompts was for 13 books you would take to an island. And so I pulled together this little spread that encapsulates 13 books that I would take with me. Some classics and some not classics, but books that um, are ones that I think about a lot. They would be things I would consider like a five star kind of book. Um, you can see how windy it is today. Um, so I've made it this little collage. I just pulled the book covers off of Goodreads and stuck them in there on that page. Um, so that was kind of a fun, you know, it was half an hour, maybe creative little exercise to do and definitely some themes running through. There's a lot of sort of fairy tale retellings, fantasy type things. Um, yeah, so if you all are interested in my top 13 picks, let me know. I'll be glad to um, put uh, some more information about those um, in the show notes or um, post them someplace that you can have access to them. I don't usually talk about books over here. I usually hit that over in my um, yarn end of things. Um, so I was going to ask you guys, if you I know I have a lot of viewers who watch both videos, if you watch just this one, do you would you mind if I also added in the other crafty things from that one? I'm thinking about combining the kind of bi-weekly craft videos all together. So I would have one that would have knitting, spinning, my book, whatever I've been reading, plus cross stitch and any other sewing and kind of life event stuff and this fall moved to a slightly different format for my yarn oriented um, videos that would be more shop based uh, and more like once a month so let me know if you have a strong opinion one way or the other um, what i would probably do is time stamp and do like a half and half where i would do maybe knitting at the beginning and then segue into spinning and books and then put a timestamp there so you could catch the end of the books if you wanted to uh, have more information about what I've been reading. And then would segue into like the cross stitch and other stitching parts. I think it would make the videos 
quite a bit longer as opposed to having two shorter ones. It would be a longer um, one, one single longer one every couple of weeks. So I wasn't sure how folks felt about that. If you have an opinion, please leave me a comment below. Let me know uh, kind of your thoughts on that too much or yeah, that sounds great or you don't care one way or the other. That's fine too. Um, and that'll help me maybe make a decision about what direction to go with that. Okay, so let's talk about stitching. Um, I did not have a lot of time every day to stitch, but I did stitch every day uh, this last half of April. Uh, so the things I have worked on, I pulled out Shoot the Moon. This is a Heaven and Earth design. It has no background, so it's basically just a silhouette and the heaven and earth design has some colors in the chart other than 310. It does have 310 in it and it has, I think it's 3799 and maybe one or two others. And I opted not to do any color change. I'm just doing this all in 310. This is being done on a 28 count even weave that I hand dyed myself. Um, you can sort of see it's a gradient. It's slightly lighter up here. And then as you go down, it gets darker down here at the bottom. So this is page one and page two. There is a page three over here, but it has almost nothing on it. There's just a little bit right here in the corner. And then this is page three and page four. So I started the Sprite um, or Fairy outline right here. Um, she has a an old fashioned type um, bow, a curved bow that is right here. Um, and it gets gradually more dense as you go down. So um, even though I sort of banged through pages one and two when I first started this, it will slow down quite a bit. Um, but I am really pleased with the amount of stitching that I got done in this. I finished her face. I love how her little pert little nose came out there. So um, yeah, I felt like that was really good progress on this for the five days that I had to put in, in on it. Um, so my plan for this next time I get back to it is to finish, so right here to right here is um, page five. And so my plan is to finish that. So that'll encompass where her arm comes around and kind of the beginning of her body right here. So that is the progress on that. And then I also worked on my Chatelaine. Now this one I am, um, if you've watched this before, I scrolled this down a little bit so I have plenty of room up at the top. So I finished this border, this black border, and I started on the landscape. I think this is Monument Valley, if I'm remembering correctly. So this is the landscape for up here. There's four landscapes, one here, two on either side, and one down at the bottom that are all Southwest uh, landscapes. Uh, these are mostly done in silks. So let me give you a close up so you can see all those colors. Loving how that came out. And then I also finished that feather except for the back stitching. So, and the feather was kind of interesting because it was some DMC, some silks, and actually a blended um, one strand of one color, one strand of another of two, two of the hand dyed silks. Um, in this end. So just back stitching to be left on this. Um, next time I get this out, which will be later this month, and my plan is to go back in and finish filling in this. There's another kind of peaked um, triangular border up here uh, that I'll also probably work on. What, what I'd like to do is get this done basically from here up. Then I can add in, there's, a cor there's corner motifs here that are beaded um, beaded animals. There's a rattlesnake. There's a roadrunner. I 
can't remember what the other two are, but anyway. So my thought is once I get the landscape finished, I'll probably do another Chatelaine Diaries uh, recording just to talk a little bit about the process and what I have done with it and the silks that are being used and that kind of good stuff. So we will see that one again later. Um, and then, hang on one second so I don't knock my tea over. I have been working on a stitching shelf, page two. The first page ends right there. So I am just about to the bottom of the diagonal and almost at the top diagonal. This is the end of page two. So still not a page finish on this one, but I did get the, the curve of the door finished. I love working on this piece, but oh my God, there's so much confetti in it. I think it looks amazing. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to when I'm 97 and have this finished. <laughs> I can actually hang it on my wall. Um, we'll talk about like finishing things here in a minute, but um, so yeah, so I've got the door happening. There's a set of balloons, I believe it is, that hang right here. So I'll have those finished by the time I'm done page two. Um, artwork by Amy Stewart. I'm doing this on the 25 count um, magic guide. Uh, DMC. Um, this is the large format chart because I have it as a, it was the first chart I bought. So I was not, I was thinking I was going to print all the pages out and work off of the print copy. And so that's the format I got. It's not the max color or the super size, normal size, normal color, just the print. The pages are divided up differently for print. So really, really, really happy with that one. Um, I'm working on that for the Full Coverage Fanatics Spring Quarterly South. Okay, then this piece I took with me um, for travel at, has it been that long since I recorded? No, I can't even remember. All right, if y'all have seen this, just bear with. So it's a bowl full of scaries that I was working on at the beginning of the month. I must have recorded about this, but I don't know, maybe not, I'm losing my mind. Anyway, scary one. Um, this is how much I've gotten done, which is to say, not very much. This is the middle tree. It's right here. And I started this border, which is actually a snake. So this is on a 36 count linen. I told you all wrong last time, so let me get the tag before I have to correct myself again. So it's the it's a 36 count linen. The colorway is Legacy. It's from Picture This Plus. The kit came with the pattern and all of the hand dyed threads for it. It's Weeks Dye Works. Um, and a little bit of trim. Sorry for the rustling, it's in a plastic. So it's got this chenille trim to go around the outside when it's finished. So I was really pretty disappointed. I, I barely got anything done on this. And you know, I had quote five days that I worked on it, but I basically filled in this last little bit of the bottom of the tree and started the next tree over and then started the border. But that is not very much progress for five days. And I guess I should have known um, when I was in Denver, I'm always tired after I vend all day on the show floor. And then my husband um, had flown in to spend some time with me. So, you know, we had dinner every night and sat around and talked and, and that was wonderful. That was great. Um, it's just, you know, there's basically no progress occurred on this whatsoever. So we'll talk about that in plans. 
Um, I did have one FFO to share with you guys. I did finally get around to, let's see where I can put this. Um, I did finally get around to finishing this little autumn uh, piece that the pattern is from the drawn thread. You might remember this was, I think it's their Simply Samplers collection, and the original pattern also had um, an alphabet attached to it. I did this on a 32 count kind of natural colored linen. Don't, it's, um, I can't remember what the type of linen is. It was a scrap I had, so I went ahead and used it. Um, all of the floss is hand dyed floss from Color and Cotton. And then I backed it with this. I found, um, I have a bunch of kind of reproduction type. Um, I think this is maybe the Kansas Troubles collection. Um, they're all the four by four charm type squares, which work perfectly for these. So I had this um, in my stash and I thought, great, I'm hauling it out. And I think it works perfectly because it picks up the color in the roof and the um, windows. That's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, so that's ready for autumn, which I know is a ways away, but hey, I got I got something finished, so let's let's roll with it. Okay. Then the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys um, before I talk about plans is another project that's a sewing project, not really a stitching project. So one of the things that we're doing in this camp, um, this online camp, is to work on some things that you're just, you're interested in, that are fun, that aren't on your to-do list. Because, you know, part of, part of the fun of going to camp when you're a kid is you get to do all kinds of stuff that you don't normally do when you are going to school and learning math and English and history. So, you, you know, you get to do arts and crafts and you get to do fishing and you go horseback riding and you go camping outdoors and you go swimming and you can pick most camps. You can pick your activities. Um, I went to not really very many summer camps. I was really fortunate because my dad's parents had a house that was three blocks from the beach um, on the East Coast. And my mom's parents owned a small farm in central Pennsylvania. So, at least up until my dad's parents died, we split the summers half and half, um, you know, part of the time at the beach, part of the time in the mountains. And then after they died, which was the years I was six and seven, we, I spent every summer with my grandparents at the farm. And there were horses to ride, and there was a lake you could go swim in, and I had a whole bunch of boy cousins that I played with outdoors, and we did all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, ride ATVs and... Um, my grandmother's dad had owned a dairy farm and so his sons, my grandmother's brothers still farmed. So, you know, you could go down and you get to bottle feed the calves and help with help, help, I guess, as much as you do with a city girl at eight, <laughs> help with the milking. I think that was mostly standing out of the way, but at any rate, you know, and you learn, I learned how to drive a tractor and all kinds of fun stuff that. I enjoyed doing when I was a kid. So one of the things for this particular camp that Victoria's encouraged us to do is to pick some things that are fun, just for fun. No deadlines, no pressure, no whatever. Um, just do some things that are not in your normal wheelhouse of stuff you do every day or you know, for work or as a to-do list thing and just enjoy doing them. So one thing that I have had as a thing I've wanted to do for quite a while is to build a mid 1880s historical reproduction type garment that could go uh, a little steampunk or could just be reenact or not reenacting, but um, just of that era, you know, I mean, something you could wear as a Halloween costume, something you could wear if you had a Comic-Con type event that you wanted to go to. So I had, oh, I already had purchased 
um, some time in the past, some patterns and some fabrics and this seemed like a perfect opportunity to work on it. I know I've got a couple of months when I'm at home. If I don't get these done, fine. Doesn't have to be done this year. I don't have some event that I'm trying to, you know, plan towards or work towards a deadline. I have plenty of those otherwise. So um, I decided to start with the underpinnings because the late, well, all of the Victorian era, but particularly the late Victorian era with the bustle period, really um, you can't have the external clothes until you have the internal structure correct. Everything is hinged on the silhouette and how, how your body stands inside those clothes. Um, and then the stuff that you put on top of it has to fit a certain way. Um, so the two things that I'm working on or will be working on, I decided to start with the very basic chemise and here is the sketch of it. Um, pattern is from Laughing Moon Mercantile. It's their number 100 pattern. It has the shift, it has a pair of drawers, and it has two different corset patterns. I'm going to be making this this one here. Um, so I had all of the fabric and everything for the chemise. So um, I mean, my friend Joy and I went down to Santa Fe this weekend and I picked up just a few things I needed. Um, thread, extra thread, some interfacing, um, that kind of thing. So I started on this, got all the pieces cut out, and I created this top section here. So then I've just got, just got this bottom part. There's little pin tucks, and then the bottom is trimmed with lace, so you do those first. You gather it along the bodice and attach it there, and then sew the two side seams. Um, and so one of the other things that we're including in kind of our, I went to summer camp journal is some sort of diary pages of things that you're working on, projects that you're doing just for notations and remembering what you did. So um, this is the fabric that I'm using. This is a white on white striped lawn. And then I have a little eyelet trim that'll go, it goes around the neckline and it'll go down here at the bottom. Um, so I've started that. And then one of the other things that I did was, um, well actually two other things. This particular corset, so you have the pattern. There's I think 25 pages of instructions. I've built corsets before um, back in my college era when I was working in costume design and I've you know I've done that level of it but it has been a while so I'm hoping it's kind of like riding a bike that I'll remember as I go um, but you know I didn't have a lot of the tools because the corsets are made with a lot of hardware there's this front closure it's got the metal hooks it is me all metal boning um, and then in the back which you can't see from the picture but you can see there right so it's got the grommets that lace up so there is a um and rabbit hole warning here for people who are interested in this there's a site called historicalsewing.com I'll put the link down below um that has amazing amazing tutorials and um she also has some online classes that focus on the creation of various Victorian silhouette and Victorian style pieces. Um, she has information on how to create the, the, the wire bustles. Um, she has step-by-step -step instructions on building the corset. Uh, so she's both free content as well as for pay online classes. She's both of those things. <clears throat> um, I went on the internet and Googled um, corset kit and there's actually a site out there I'll put a link below that you can order the the kit from it includes the lining it includes uh, all of the um, metal stays that will go in it includes the front bust which is that front clip shut closure all your grommets your lacing um, you 
can just get it with the interior fabric and then use your own exterior, but I just went ahead and had them kitted up with the um, plain heavy cutile that'll be the exterior because I know that holds up really well. Um, so that's on its way here and that'll be like a much longer term project than the chemise. Um, I also had in my fabric stash some striped silk that I want to try to use for the overskirt and part of the jacket piece of this. Uh, but I don't really have a fabric that would, I don't have enough of any one fabric that would coordinate for the body of the jacket and the main part of the underskirt. So I found another fantastic site called renaissancefabrics.com and they send out up to four free samples. So I had them send me two of their wool flannels that I thought might work with the striped silk, which has kind of a charcoal gray, cream, a slate blue, and kind of a sand stripe. Um, I'll bring that next time uh, to show you guys. I'll dig it out. Um, so that's one of my summer camp projects is this to work on over the summer, which I think will be a lot of fun. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. I'm sorry for the dogs that are barking insanely. If you guys can hear that, they are at the corner and they are really obnoxious. That's with a bark collar on. They both have bark collars on. I tend to think they aren't either working or don't do anything anymore. Just saying. Okay, moving on. Half an hour. Let's talk about some plans. Now, um, I know she just uploaded this yesterday, but if you have not, go over and watch Jessie Marie's newest video. Um, she talks a little bit about um, working on Lady of the Flag and some of her bigger projects. Now, I'm kind of in the same boat. Now, I don't, I don't have, I think it's 68, 67, however many projects Jess has going. I don't have that level of projects. I have 16. But that's still more than I feel comfortable with, especially because I feel like while I love this five-day rotation, I never get bored. Everything stays really fresh for me that way. I don't feel like I'm getting things finished, which is important to me. So after I listened to her video yesterday, and I had been kind of toying with maybe trying a monogamous May uh, I knew I wasn't going to do Stitch Mania, so this is not Mania plans, just FYI, if you're here for those, they don't exist. Uh, so I sat down last night and I went back through my stitching journal and I looked at the three main things that I had listed as goals for myself for 2018. So those three goals were to put some stitches in on every one of the projects that I have to finish six projects and to have a page finish finish for each of my full coverage pieces. Okay. So how am I doing on those? I haven't touched every project. I have touched a fair number of the 16. Um, but I haven't touched all of them. That's definitely not happening. So I need to do better on those. You may also remember that I kind of had a personal year of whips mixed in there and that goes along with the page finishes and the finishing of six projects. So I have finished two projects so far this year that were in my original set. This was not. This was a start this year and yes it was a finish but it was not something that was held over from last year. So I finished the February wordplay and I finished the Every Heart Pincushion in February and March, I believe. I believe that was right. Um, so there's two out of six, so that's still four projects. Page finish for my full coverage pieces. So I currently have four full coverage pieces. I had initially thought that I was gonna add two more in, but I have nixed that idea because I just can't justify starting another project that size when I have things like a stitching shelf that has 94 pages and I'm a page and a half into it. I just can't mentally go there. Um, so I have had a page finish on the stitching shelf. I finished page one this year. 
And I have had a page finish on Winter's Encounter. That's the one with the horse and the little chickadee. Um, so that leaves me a page finish on Which Way, which I have not stitched on at all this year, and Six of Swords, which I have put some stitches in but did not get a page finish. So I'm about half, half on that. So what I would ideally like to have happen is to get down to 12 whips or less by the end of the year. And I would like to, I would like to try to focus on getting a couple more of the smaller pieces done so that I can continue towards the finished six projects. Because realistically, you guys, a stitching shelf is not gonna get done this year. 94 pages, I, it's not gonna get done this year. It's just not. Uh, even if I stitched eight hours a day for the every single day for the rest of the year, I would not finish that piece. Um, and the same is probably true of Six of Swords. I mean, yes, if I stitched that much every day, I could probably finish it. It's not as big, but it's still a full-sized, full-coverage piece. Not going to happen. So Jesse was talking about this as well, where if you're somebody who has a lot of bigger pieces, you know, you can budget you can budget what you think is going to be, oh yeah, I'll get that done. But then, you know, life happens. You, you have a day where you're like, oh, I'm going to go do something after dinner with a friend or I'm going out to dinner with a friend. Or instead of spending all Saturday sitting in my lair stitching, I'm going to go to Santa Fe and do some other fun things. And, you know, ultimately your hobbies should be fun. That's why they're hobbies. They're not your job. So... It's a real, the, the struggle is real. If you have larger pieces, you just, and um, Stephanie over at Miss Oso Crafty said this to me once, the, you know, if you have these big ass projects, you just have to be okay with the fact that you're not gonna get a finish every month. It just takes more time to finish a project. You have to look at a longer term schedule. And, I, and I'm perfectly fine with it being a longer term schedule, but I do also want to see some progress. And while I love the five day rotation because it does kind of keep me interested in stuff, it's not really getting a lot of time in on any one piece, even when I dedicate multiple five day blocks to it. So here's what I'm going to do. I am jumping on Jesse Marie's bandwagon to do a... Um, monogamous May I'll pull the hashtags and put them down below she has two really good ones May may not may monogamous may monogamous I think is one of them I can't remember what the other one is Jesse's so much she's got all those good words to use um, so here's my plan initially I had a bunch of stuff that I was gonna start or not start but break up into my usual five day rotation for May. Um, in looking at the 16 whips that I have left, I feel like for sure I can finish Bowl of Scaries, Welcome Autumn, um, Believe, and Key to My Heart, for sure. So that would be the final four that I need to finish and I don't have to finish them right away, but those are the final four that would take me to my six finishes for Year of Whips and would get me down to 12, the magic 12 or less projects. I think what I want to do, however, because I still want to try to get to the page finish and I still want to work on my full coverage pieces, I don't want to just focus on smalls and then have nothing for the rest of the year except huge projects to work on. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to start with Bowl of Scaries. Where did I put that? Okay. Sorry. That's this one. That I It's still in my cute snap. It's ready to go. I'm going to work on this until it's done. It would feel great to get a finish in May. That would be fantastic. I don't think it will take me all month. Um, I've got a couple of weekends coming up that I know are going to be 
decent stitching weekends where I'll be here, where I can sit and stitch. I've got the time. Um, I'm going to work really hard on doing that. When I finish that this month, um, I'm going to skip working on my Chatelaine for the month of May. And instead, I'm either going to try to get a page finish on a stitching shelf or on Six of Swords. We'll see what I feel like. I'm guessing probably a stitching shelf, but we'll see when I get there. So that's it. That's my plan for May. Work on a bowl full of scaries until it's done and then work on a stitching shelf until the end of the month. Pretty simple. Going forward, again, because I know a stitching shelf is not gonna get done this year, but I would like to get that other, that page two finished um, so that I've already started. Going forward, I think what I'm gonna look at doing is tackle then one of the sort of mid-sized pieces, not one of the Heaven and Earth design full coverage pieces. Um, something like Winter Garden, which is by the Drawn Thread. If I go with that, I'll haul it out next time so you guys can see that for planning purposes. It's about half done. So I feel like if I put some time in and on it, I could actually get that done this year. Um, and that's not a small piece. I, it's skinny, but it's, it's long and it's got specialty stitches and so on and so forth. So I think if I try to alternate between a smaller project and finish it, then work some on a full coverage piece, then you go back to a larger piece and either finish it completely or do the same kind of thing where I get like a page finish on it, even if it's maybe like a four or five page design. Because I have things like um, my Village of Hawk Run Hollow. That's not going to get finished this year either, but I certainly could finish a couple blocks, right? I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't break it down that way and have it as a mini finish um, and still feel like progress. And I think if I do that, if I alternate between those two, um, the smaller projects and try to get those four finish that I mentioned, and then kind of the medium sized projects where I either do a page or a block or some finite section where I can say, okay, I've done that. Um, same thing with like shoot the moon. I could finish that page that I'm on that has the body of the sprite. That would be a page finish and it's not a page finish like full coverage, but it's a chunk of that piece finished. And I think if I approach it that way, um, I'll have decent progress on everything that I've got active right now. And I won't get burned out. I know um, like Jesse's plan is to work on the reader until it's finished. And that's a huge piece. It's a Joan Elliott piece. So um, I I'm going to be cheering her on to do it because really if anybody can, it's her. You know, she stitches an amazing amount in any given month and she's a quick stitcher and she does beautiful work. But for me, the thought of saying, okay, I'm not going to work on anything else until Village of Hawk Run Hollow is finished. I don't think I can make myself toe that line mentally. It quits being fun then for me. And again, this is a hobby and it should be fun. So those are my plans. Um, we'll see how it goes. I haven't, um, I haven't really worked on a piece quite that focusedly. Is that a word? Focus? With that much focus? Um, I did a little bit on Star Weaver, the um, story keep that I stitched for my dad for Christmas this past year, but I did intersperse some other stuff in with it. So, and it's only it was only three pages. So, um, yeah, let's let's see how we go. Um, I definitely do want to put some good time in on the Winter's Encounter and Which Way because both of those are full coverage pieces, but they're minis, which means that I think they have like a total of nine pages maybe I think it's like it's like the first row is four the second row is four full pages so maybe they're ten pages and then the bottom row is just half pages so it kind of winds up being four half pages so like ten pages total I think that's right but I, I could see myself getting through one of those in the next year which would be awesome 
you know, unfortunately, the list of stuff that I have that I'm like, ooh, I want to start that next, they're all also massive projects. I have four or five Joan Elliott's that I'd like to start. I have the Cooler Design Studio Seasons. Um, I have a couple of um, Dimensions Gold kits that I want to start. And it's not that I don't like the smaller projects. I do. I think these are uber cute. I li love to have them out. But the stuff that I'm really drawn to are all the huge pieces. So, you know, I got to find a way to manage them that I feel like I'm not just starting stuff. Um, and I've got the two Heaven and Earth designs I've got kitted up um, that I was going to start this year that I have have no interest in starting right now. The Gypsy Firefly, that's another Amy Stewart piece, and the River's Edge um, for my husband. So, um, wow, this is a long one today, you guys. Obviously, I was in a chatty mood. 45 minutes. Okay. I think that's it. I will endeavor to link stuff below. If you have questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, I'm going to try to check back in mid-May. Might be around the 10th. Um, my husband's going to be home for a week, and I think I want to try to record when he's not here, but he is going to go to work that week here at his old office. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to give it a shot sometime mid-month just so you guys can find out what I'm doing, and I'll check in a little bit, and I think probably will be a slightly shorter video. So anyway, uh, for those of you participating in Mania, cheering you on from here kick some butts, start some projects, do all the stitching, stitch all the things, uh, but above all, have a great time. So I'm looking forward to seeing your Mania vlogs and updates and further videos, and I will talk to you guys sometime mid-May. Take care.